Now what if I wanted to move files? The difference between copy and move is that the copy command will leave the file in its original source. So if I had a file in the temp directory and I copied it to documents, I would have two copies of it, one in the temp directory and one under documents. Move, however, will remove the file from temp and move it entirely to documents. So I'll have only one copy of it. As a side note, and this is important to know, move is also used as a renaming function in Linux. So in Microsoft Windows, for example, you can right click on a file and click on rename to change the name of a file. In Linux, there is no rename command. We use the move command to rename files and folders. So let's see how this works. I'm going to create a file under the temp directory called to move. And I'll do that using the command touch space slash temp slash to move. Let me list the contents of the temp directory. And I can see that to move file is over there. Let's say now I want to move it to the documents folder or the documents directory. I can do that by typing MV for move slash temp slash to move to documents. Look at the right hand side and there we go. It moved there. Now, if I display the content of the temp directory, I can notice that to move file is no longer there. By the way, if I want to redisplay the previous commands, I can use the up arrow and tap it a number of times to keep going back in commands or in my command history. So I'm going to do that to recreate the file under the temp directory. So now I've recreated the to move file. Again, I display the content of the temp directory and the file is recreated. Like in copy, if I use the move command and the file already exists in the destination directory, it will automatically be overwritten. So again, if I move it from temp to documents, you'll notice that it got overwritten and the original file disappeared. Let me recreate it a third time. And now when I want to move it, I'm going to use like in copy, the minus I option, which stands for interactive. Now let's see what happens. It will ask me, do you want to override? I'm going to say no. Let's quickly revisit the copy command and see how we can use it easily with the dot and the dot dot notations that we saw previously. I'm going to go back to my documents folder. And in my temp folder, I have the X files, which I want to copy to the documents folder. I can do that in many ways. The first way I'm going to be using is CP temp X files. And the destination is tilde, which stands for my home directory slash documents. And notice that the file has been copied. I'm going to delete it very quickly. And now that I am in the documents directory, I'm going to do the neat trick of using the dot which stands for current working directory. So now if I type cp slash temp slash x files space dot, I'm telling Linux that I want to copy the x files into wherever I am right now. And it happens that I am in documents. And as we can see, the x files has been copied to documents. Let's say instead of copying it to documents, I want to copy it to the root directory. And the way to do this is by typing cd slash temp slash x files space dot dot. The dot dot again stands for up one directory. So in this case, I'm copying the X files file to the root directory. If I go up one directory using my graphical interface, I'll see that the X files has been copied up one directory, which happens to be the root directory.